What's up? Today, I want to show you guys what? how we got our son to not stop talking about Jesus for an entire year. You tell the camera what we're doing today. Huh? That's right. <laughs> so, it is Easter and it is the day before Jesus died and we are going to make a chocolate tomb. We have just finished the, what layer is that? Uh, four. Okay, spin it around, give us a show and tell. There we go, there's the door. What happened he to Jesus? To mama, mama. He died and then? Raised from the dead. He raised from the dead. Grab your bread. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So that's the door. Is it? Yep. Ooh, that's pretty good. It'll stand at least. That's pretty good. Must have that door, probably carve it a bit more. Okay. I'm nervous. Ooh. Look at that. I was like, there's a hole! <laughs> I got a massive fright thing here, broke it. It's the coolest that tomb. Out. That is the coolest tomb. Do you want to see the tomb? Do you see it? What is that? What is that? One of the most fascinating things about the Easter story is that the Old Testament actually has so many prophecies about this event. One of my favorites is Psalms 22. Have you ever wondered why when Jesus was on the cross, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's actually the beginning of Psalms 22. And Psalms 22 actually predicts what is happening on the cross. He said that because a lot of the people, Pharisees, the people, they knew the, the law, they knew the Torah, they knew the Psalms. A lot of them would have finished that Psalm in their mind and realized what the Psalm is talking about is happening right now so it's a prophecy about the messiah and believe it or not it was written almost 600 years before the event so it starts off my god my god why have you forsaken me why are you so far from helping me i'm just going to skip a little bit verse 7 all those who see me ridicule me they shoot out their lip they shake their head saying he trusted in the lord let him rescue him let him deliver him since he delights in him Verse 14, he says, I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It has melted within me. My strength is dried up like a potsherd. My tongue clings to my jaws. You have brought me to the dust of death. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. Amazing. Check this out. Matthew 27 verse 35 Then they crucified him and divided his garments, casting lots. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, You who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God. Come down from the cross, just like in Psalms 22. And I have another prophecy. There's more prophecies. There's so many prophecies. But I have another one that I want to share with you guys. Hey Phil and Tash and fam, 
This year, more than ever, Esther is showing us that church is not a building or a group, but that we are all the body of Christ. We want to celebrate that with our special brothers and sisters. You guys, you are a rich blessing to us. Happy Easter. So I'll light this later. Make it go into the air. Everyone will be doing that. <laughs> Today is the day Jesus gets crucified. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a cross and we're going to make Jesus so we can put him on the cross so the kids can visualize Jesus dying on the cross. And then once he's died on the cross, we're going to put him inside the tomb and he's going to stay there until Sunday when he raises from the dead. And then we have a special tomb smashing session that the kids will never ever forget. Here we have our Jesus. Yes. Oh, don't break Jesus. David, you're breaking the cross. Oh, mate. You broke the cross. Jesus on the cross. Today we're going to be learning about Jesus dying on the cross. And in the tomb. And in the tomb, that's right. Jesus had gone to his favorite garden. Look David, this is Jesus' favorite garden. He went there to pray, the disciples went along. Is Jesus still in the tomb? Is he still there? Yeah. He is? Yeah. Is Jesus still in the tomb, David? See? He? He's still there. <coughs> Another Old Testament prophecy. It's actually even older than the one I shared. This one is from the book of Isaiah and it was written literally 700 years before Christ. 2,800 years ago, this was written about Jesus and it explains the life that he lived and the death he would die. Isaiah 53 verse 4 is a pretty famous verse. It says, Surely he has borne our sicknesses and carried our diseases. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Other versions of the Bible says he was pierced for our iniquities. This is clearly talking about Jesus dying on the cross and what it means for us, and it was written such a long time ago. Roll this. Is he still there? Yep, still there. Yep, cool. <laughs> Welcome to the vlog. So you are the mastermind behind the chocolate tomb. I'm always looking for ways to try and communicate the gospel to my kids. Easter being the most important period of celebration time for the church seemed to always be dominated by this, this sort of secular bunnies and Easter eggs, you know, anything chocolate. So that kind of irritated me a lot. And over the years, I, I just kept thinking, there's got to be something better. There's got to be something better. And the Lord said, well, build an Easter tomb out of chocolate. And I thought, well, that's a cool idea. <laughs> it's got to be at least 15 years ago now. We stopped buying these rigs and bunnies and started building chocolate tombs. Instead of reading the adult Bible, because our children are three and one, I am reading out of a kid's Bible. But as they get older, you can increase the deepness in Revelation as you go through the stories with them. Jesus died on the cross last night, do you remember? Where is he? Still in the tomb. No good news. Jesus is still in the tomb. 
team. You know, the, the ultimate for me would be everybody does it. And the outcome is more kids are coming. They're making that personal commitment. They know Jesus the way the disciples did. And the effect of that would be phenomenal. Have a look and see if... Where's, is Jesus still there? Yeah. Where's he? Oh. Where's Jesus? Is he there? Is he in the tomb? No. He's not? No. What happened? <laughs> Three days later, the earth shook. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven and pushed the stone away. Mary was walking to the tomb with some of her friends. They saw an angel who said, do not be afraid. Jesus is not here. He has risen. Oh, you're wiping yourself. Mm. I guarantee the last time we did this with, with Joseph, he didn't stop talking about Jesus for an entire year. I encourage you guys to do this with your family and you will see lots of fruit from this in your life. Let's not let Easter be taken over by the secular world because Jesus is alive. My last scripture is probably the oldest of them all. It's when Moses lifted up the bronze serpent in the wilderness. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water and our soul loathes this worthless bread. So the people were complaining about being saved. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they bit the people. And many of the people of Israel died. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he may take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. My question for you is, have you been bitten? Has life hurt you? Do you feel burdened, broken, beaten down by life? What well, says, The Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And so it was. If a serpent had bitten anyone when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. And so that story is not in there by accident. It actually is a reflection of Jesus and what he did on the cross. Jesus says in John 3, 14, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. He says that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that through him the world might be saved. And so my question for you watching this video is have you been bitten? Have you sinned against God? Have you rebelled? Do you feel downcasted, low, hurt? Do you need a bit of saving right now? Do you need to come out of a dark situation? Well, if you just look to Jesus, you can be saved. If you just look to Jesus, you can be healed. By his wounds, we are healed. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And so all we need to do is look to Jesus and we shall be saved. He will pluck us up out of darkness. He will pull us into the light. He is reaching out his hand right now. Will you take it? Will you take that next step? Look to Jesus. The time is now. Don't wait. Lighter. Check. Lantern. Check. Yay, we're gonna go set off the lantern because Jesus has risen. I forgot my lights. It's dark, but now it's scary. They can connect. Your fingers? Oh, you're big enough to hug a pole, is that what you're saying? Hey Jojo, 
It's the police. What'd you just do? I'm doing my fart guy. <laughs> Yay, we made it. Okay, so what do we do? Do you have to pull this off? You have to hold it the other way. What are you doing? I'm looking. Do we have to just burn this cardboard bit? No, this is fine. We're in the middle of the field. Cool. We're right by wooden poles and grass all around those wooden poles. Isn't that how it works? This is good. Do I just let it go? There's a hole. There's a hole right there. No, it's it out. fine. That's fine. Now this happened to Ayla's one. She said it drifted off and it got caught in the tree. It's filling up. I think it wants to fly. You yeah. ready? He has risen!